Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing about thyristor controlled series capacitor that is TCLC. It is another kind of flex devices. We have already studied various flex devices like thyristor controlled reactor, thyristor switch capacitor, its combination, straight comb, classification of flex devices and what is flex technology that we have already discussed in the previous lectures. Today we will be discussing about thyristor controlled series capacitor. Now, what is thyristor controlled series capacitor? So basically a thyristor controlled series capacitor is a capacitive reactance compensator which consists of a series capacitor bank that which is shunted by a thyristor controlled reactor to provide a smoothly variable series capacitive reactance. So basically a thyristor control reactor is a fixed capacitor which is connected in parallel with a thyristor control reactor that we have already discussed. Now what is the basic principle of thyristor control reactor? Oh, sorry a TCSC. So a TCSC is series controlled capacitive reactance that can provide continuous control of power on the AC line over a wide range. right? Now, the principle, the basic principle of operation of TCSC is a variable series compensation which simply increases the fundamental frequency voltage across the fixed capacitor by controlling the firing angle of the thyristor controlled reactor. Right? So, now this voltage changes the effective value of series capacitive reactance. Right? So, by changing the series capacitive reactant, reactance, we can change various parameters of transmission line. Right? This basic idea about the thyristor con controlled series capacitor, we know that before the TCSC, we are using a series capacitor in the transmission line. So the series capacitor is used to compensate the series inductive reactance. Now, in order to provide or in order to control the reactance of the capacitor, we are connecting this capacitor in shunt with a thyristor controlled reactor. Right? So the equivalent impedance of the this LC combination is expressed as which is equal to Z equivalent of J1 by omega C in parallel with J of omega L. Now, if we take the impedance of capacitor alone, it can be given by minus of J1 by omega C. Right. So, there are three conditions in which we can divide this TCSC or there are three conditions which controls the operation of TCSC. The very first condition is when the reactance of the fixed capacitor is less than that of parallel connected variable reactor. So, in this condition, the variable capacitor, the fixed capacitor having the reactance, having the value of reactance less than that of variable reactor. Now, that this combination provides a variable capacitive reactance, right? So, in this combination, the inductor increases the equivalent capacitive reactance of the LC combination above that of fixed capacitor. So, this basically or what it, that in this mode the TCSC basically works as an inductor. Now the second mode is when the, both the capacitive value and the inductive reactive value inductive value are equal. In this condition a resonance will develop and this condition is not acceptable at any cost. Right? Now the third condition in which the LC combination provides inductance above the value of fixed capacitor. Now this situation corresponds to the inductive vernier mode of the TCSC operation. Now in the variable capacitance mode of the TCSC, the inductive reactance of the variable inductor is increased. The equivalent capacitive reactance is gradually decreases. With the increase in the inductive value, there will be decrease in the capacitive value. Now, the minimum equivalent capacitive 
reactance is obtained for extremely large inductive reactance or when the variable inductor is open circuited now this tcsc behaves <coughs> like the parallel lc operation that we have already studied in second year of electrical engineering <coughs> The difference is that the LC combination is the LC combination analysis is based on the presence of pure sinusoidal voltage and current. But in our case, that is in the TCSC, due to the presence of thyristor controlled reactor, the sinusoidal voltage and current is not possible. So, in our case, the TCSC is in difference with a parallel LC combination. Now there are basically three modes of operation of TCSC. The very first one is a bypass thyristor mode. The second one is locked thyristor mode and the third one is partially conducting thyristor mode or it's also called the vernier mode. Now the very first we will discussing about the pipe bypassed thyristor mode. Now in this bypass mode the thyristor are made to fully conduct with an conduction angle of 180 degree. So the gate pulse are applied at a zero degree of voltage. Right. So when the voltage start at zero degree, the thyristors are conducting. And when the voltage reaches zero and becomes positive, resulting in the continuous sinusoidal flow of current through the thyristor walls. Now this mode behaves like a parallel capacitor inductor combination because of fully conduction of thyristor the inductor is available with its full capacity. Now the net current through the module is inductive right the net current which is flowing through the module is inductive. For the susceptance of the reactor is chosen to be greater than that of capacitor. Why? Because the value of reactance is greater than that of capacitor. This mode is also known as thyristor switch reactor mode. Right? Now this mode, why we, we are using bypass thyristor mode? It is used for control purpose and and it is used for initiating certain protective functions. Now, the second mode is blocked thyristor mode. Now, this mode is also called as waiting mode. The firing pulses to the thyristors walls are blocked. So, no current will flow through the thyristor. Now, what happens when the thyristor are conducting? and a blocking command is given to the thyristors. So the thyristor will turn off as soon as the current through the through them reaches a zero crossing. So when th the current that is flowing through the thyristor becomes zero, thyristor will enter into blocking mode from the conducting mode. Now this module is reduced to a fixed capacitor and the net TCSC reactance is capacitive as the inductor is not in a play. Now in this mode, we, the important thing is that the DC offset voltage of the capacitors are monitored and quickly discharged using a DC offset control without causing any harm to the transmission system transformers. So whenever it is required, the capacitors are quickly discharge using a DC offset controlled. Now the third mode is partially conducting thyristor mode or vernier mode. So in this mode the thyristor are fired but fired and they are conducting but not for an full 180 degree conduction. The thyristor will conduct but for an 
specified angle only right so in this mode the tcsc to behave to be behave as either as continuously controlled capacitive reactance or as a continuously controllable inductive reactance and how this will we will achieve this will be achieved by controlling the firing angle of thyristor pair now remember one important thing here a smooth transition from the capacitive to inductive mode is not permitted because of the resonant condition because with a smooth transition a point will come when the inductive reactance becomes equal to capacitive reactance and this tcsc modes enters into oxidation mode right so a smooth transition is not permitted in this tcsc now one of the variant of this mode is the capacitive vernier control mode right in which a thyristor are fired when the capacitor voltage and capacitor current have opposite polarity now due to this condition the tcr current that has a direction opposite that of the capacitor current resulting into a loop current flow in tcsc controller so now this loop current increases the voltage across the fixed capacitor and enhances the equivalent capacitive reactance and thereby the series compensation level of the line system, transmission line right so this is how the tcsc operates right now to save the tcsc from the resonance condition the final angle alpha of the forward facing thyristor measured from the positive reaching a zero crossing of the capacitor voltage is constrained in the range of alpha minimum to an angle 180 degree right now this will provides a continuous vernier control of tcsc module reactants now with the decrease in the value of alpha the loop current increases the maximum tcsc reactants with an alpha minimum is typically 2 and half to 3 times the capacitor reactance at fundamental frequency now the second variant of this thyristor um, vernier mode is inductive vernier mode in which the tcsc can be operated by having a high level of thyristor conduction now in this mode the direction of the circulating current is reversed and the controller presents a net inductive impedance so in the previous mode the tcsc is behaving as a net capacitive impedance now in this mode it will behave as a net inductive impedance mode right so here is the reactance characteristic curve of tcsc now this region which is marked as resonance region in this direction the tcsc will behave as capacitor a variable capacitor and in this region it will behave as an inductive region the value of capacitive region is from alpha minimum to an angle of 180 degree and for the capacitive case its value lies in between alpha minimum to 90 degree between alpha l minimum and alpha c minimum there is a resonance region so the inductive and capacitive regions are the tcsc working regions and the resonance resonance region occurs between these two regions where tcsc should not be operated near to the resonance region there is a large in reactance for a small change in firing angle 
so for an angle between alpha and limit to 90 degree this tcsc works as inductive region and with the alpha c limit to an angle of 180 degree it is works in capacitive region and in between angle of alpha l limit to alpha c limit there is a resonance region and the tcsc should not be operated in this region at any cost thank you for watching